Once more, good evening to everyone. Good evening, sir. Yeah, we are, yes. we are going to deal. We're going to to deal with project management methodologies. I know I know you guys are no longer new to this topic because I know all of you are already a project manager based on the life uh, the last class we, we the last module on project management but in um business analysis we still have to deal with project management because what you'll be doing as a business analyst is working on projects so is a requirement in this particular course if we didn't have um, a module in project management, this will make up for any kind of deficiency. So, in project management, we have so many types of project management methodologies, like Six Sigma. Agile methodology, waterfall, lean, and uh, Kanban is not a methodology anyway. But some treat Kanban as a methodology, but it's not. Um, but it's still in the school of thought, they are still because it's a method still. So uh in this particular model we are going to be focusing on waterfall a bit and we are going to deal extensively uh in agile methodology we want to capture agile methodology very well you know because this is the the future of project management you know so i don't want us to to waste time mainly if we are looking into it project management most companies that have worked those that are, are not into agile are seriously working into migrating uh, migrating into Agile. So the company I joined recently, they have been uh, planning for some time to, to go into Agile, but me and my team, we, we, we moved them into Agile and uh, we've concluded our first Agile Sprint which is a very big breakthrough for them. Agile methodology is, uh, it pays companies very well. We, the professionals, are the people that suffer it because it can be draining, but it's very profitable to the organization. It can be draining to you as a project manager or as a practitioner uh, working in Agile because it doesn't give you breathing space. You keep on delivering value to the company. You see every two, two weeks, you, you, you bring something to the table for them. And that is why every company is rushing into Agile because Agile will give you a practical plan to constantly bring in something to the table through cycling small, small projects. You might see small, small, we keep on bringing something. Every week, every two weeks, we bring something to the table. So let's move. The waterfall methodology is a sequential 
development process that flows like water through all phases of a project from requirement analysis to requirement design to requirement implementation to testing and maintenance in waterfall each in waterfall each phase is completely wrapped up before the next phase begins so the downfall of waterfall is that it doesn't give it doesn't give the stakeholders opportunity to understand the outcome of the pro the, the project till the project is actually finished unlike in agile that you dish it small by small so they, they have a taste of what we are the, the full package is going to be before the full package comes out. So, and if anything goes wrong in um, in in the waterfall methodology, if you are using waterfall to implement a software, for instance, if during the test maybe something goes wrong you have to start everything all over again unlike in um in agile that you can every segment or every unit you test if the units have a problem you can just um fix the unit and everything but this one you won't have opportunity until uh, opportunity to test until after the implementation, which is not good, according to the school of thought. So, but the only good thing with this waterfall is that it helps you to plan very well. It plans for a project very well. Thorough planning. But according to Agile, Agile believe that this thorough planning does not bring something to the table. Agile believe that what brings something to the table is working software, not paperwork. So, um, like I said, we're not going to be dwelling so much on this. We already know about waterfall methodology so then we come to agile methodology the agile methodology manages a project by breaking it up into several phases. It involves constant collaboration with stakeholders and continuous improvement at every stage. Project team cycles through a process of planning, executing, and evaluating. Continuously collaboration is vital both with team members and project stakeholders. So you continue to collaborate so in Agile, Agile have made it possible that you and your team must meet every day, no matter what, because it's a requirement in Agile. You must at least spend 15 minutes with the whole project team in what we call daily stand-up. If you are, if you if you say that you apply you are you are you are applying agile methodology and you don't observe 15 minutes every day with your project team to collaborate, to ask questions, what have you done yesterday? What are you doing today? What are your challenges? You must do that every day within a 15 minute uh, duration. Then you have not started, you miss, you are not practicing Agile. And Agile break it down that, <clears throat> 
every time you, um, a project execution cannot be more than, it cannot be more than one month. And so many, most companies have adopted is a, a period of one month, two, two weeks, a standard of two weeks to, to one month. Most companies have adopted two weeks as a standard for, for you to implement your projects. Yeah, that is when you are in, uh, producing a unit of projects, that is a sprint. Is within two weeks to one month, you must produce something. So that is how you constantly bring something to the table. And that's how you, you, you must collaborate with stakeholders within this period of time. So it's a constant collaboration. You must invite them to show them what you are doing on two weeks basis, at least. And within that time, the team must equally meet to do uh, product backlog review, um, uh, grooming, and the sprint retrospective. So you find out that you continue to collaborate. And in Agile, a project team cannot be more than 10, making it to be a very small, group of people who can come together, bond very well, know themselves very well by name, by character, by personality, because you people are a small group of people. You know everybody very well, and this will help you to bond very well. And when you guys are bonded very well and meeting regularly, there will be no reason why you shouldn't be delivering values. So like other methodologies, you can find out that maybe a project team, you can have up to 40 people in a project team. You might find out the project, the, the, the project uh, manager might not even know all the team members very well. So. According to Agile Manifesto, Agile have four main values. These values are individual and interaction over processes and tools. Individual and interaction. So people to interact, they prefer it than their processes or processes is all these bureaucratic processes. It must be this way or we must use um, uh, DevOps or we must use um, so, so too. Uh, people coming together to interact is the best way to solve a problem. Brainstorming, that is the best way to solve a problem. And brainstorming, you can't, you can't do brainstorming if you don't come together as a team to look at what you people are solving. Number two, working software, according to Agile Manifesto, is better than comprehensive documentation. After a comprehensive documentation in um, Waterfall, and you don't come out with a working, doc, do, uh, a working software, the documentation is useless. But no matter how scanty your documentation is and your software is powerful, is working, is better, according to Agile Manifesto. Customer collaboration over negotiation, over contract negotiation, is better to collaborate with your customers engage them, understand them, work with them more as a, as a, uh, a partner or 
within your, your, your business and you get to understand them and give them the best value than you are talking about uh, contracts, uh, this. So they believe in understanding customers better. Because whatever you are producing, you are producing for a customer. And when you understand the person you are producing this for, it will be better. You cannot be cooking food for someone and you not ask the person what the person wants to eat. It's not good. You know? So, even if um, children, how we, I always want to ask them what they want to eat before I make their food. Then you just um, you you prepare swallow for your children and they want to eat indomie and you have indomie, you force them to eat uh, swallow because you feel people should have choice. People's um, opinion should matter. That's why if you should give their, their customer that kind of um, engagement, understand what they need. You tailor your service to their need and you see them coming back again because you understand their need, give them the service they want. Another one is responding to change over following a plan. When they are, we are living in a dynamic world, things change, things keep on changing. More especially in software industry where we live, you follow a plan, and the plan you follow is no longer valid. You continue to follow that plan. It doesn't doesn't make sense. Look at the, the trend and follow the, the trend. If customers' demand is changing, they are the king. Follow their demand, they are, they are changing uh, demand, not following a plan. When I came to, to UK for study, you know, actually I came to study economics. But when I came to UK from Nigeria, my plan is to come and study uh, financial economics. But when I came over here, I found out that my plan is not going to work because the economic theories is is always the so I need things are changing. No longer that kind of economics, uh, economic analysis. I, I have to follow. I, I quickly navigated from uh, my plan, and I follow the change. I switched to IT. You know, and I'm not regretting it at all. So if I followed my plan after all, this is the original plan. So when there is changing environment, look at those changes. There is a reason for change and try to consider it more especially if you are servicing people, which is the customers. These are the, the, the these are the key things. Agile is a preaching. So, Agile is based on Scrum framework, which is for developing, delivering, and sustaining products within a complex environment. Designed for for team of ten or fewer members. When you say complex environment, which I want us to understand what a complex environment means. At times we dive into 
into a project that we don't know how it's going to to end or the outcome of that project. So that what we mean by complex environment. So like when Facebook started Facebook, they don't know how the, the outcome is going to be. They don't even know what they are going to use Facebook to do. But they know that Facebook have got <coughs> good job. And their main plan, their main plan is for using the Facebook for collaboration and come uh, among friends and their peers. But today, it's turning into, not is it turning, it has turned into another thing. And even up to today, they do not, even the owner, don't know how it's going to end. So this is how complex it is. You know, so, but Agile will give you the opportunity to dive in. You manage little by little. So you help you, you don't take so much risk because you commit small amount of investment. You keep on committing small, small. And if it, it keeps turning out good, you commit more. If it keeps turning out good, you commit more. So that is how agile is. And that so many softwares are coming up now is because so many companies have adopted Agile, which is helping them to develop all these complex projects, which is all these softwares who are using Zoom and the rest of them. Even Zoom, we don't know how Zoom is going to, to turn out. But as we can see that Zoom is gradually turning into another thing, become a full-fledged classroom. As a matter of fact, this Zoom have a, Zoom, a, a, a whiteboard. If I, if I turn my whiteboard, I'll start writing and everybody will start seeing it in Zoom. But it wasn't the original plan. It was just for video conferencing. But they keep on adding other things. Scrum team consists of a product owner, a Scrum master and developers. The team is self-managing, cross-functional, and focus on one objective at a time. The product goal. Scrum flows in a base of, a Scrum uh, workflow is based on sprints, a repeatable fixed time boss during which a done product of the highest possible value is created. Scrum is wrapped up in event like daily Scrum, Scrum review and sprint retrospective. So we have Scrum Master, which serve as a project manager in um, Scrum, but they don't call it project manager because they, according to Scrum, project manager is so sound authoritative. So they use the word Scrum master, which makes the Scrum master a servant leader. The product owner is the person that owns the product they are developing. So the kind of that all the team product project team or product team is working to deliver the goal of the product owner. So the product owner stand as in that project is stand is standing 
for the interest of the stakeholder. So the, the product owner is the stakeholder that you are seeing within that project. And the product owner stands as a buffer to protect the scrum team, making sure that the overzealous stakeholders doesn't get break into the scrum team. So as they as a stakeholder, you can't um, give order or authority to the project team. Whatever you need to communicate with the project team officially, you must have to pass through the product owner for you to. Um, so the, for this, the product owner stand to protect the, the scrum team from distraction and the product owner have the power the only person that have the power to call off the project not even the 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 the, the stakeholders if you want the product to call off you must call it off through the product owner so that is how scrum work and the developer the developers in the Scrum team is consists of the programmers, the business analysts, the designers, the testers, and other people within the project team. So all these people come together, they are all developers according to Scrum. So when you hear developers, it's not only the programmers, but at times we hear developers, we think the program, the developers are only the, no, they are not according to Scrum. So the Scrum flow is based on sprint, which is, like I said, is two weeks, between two weeks to one month. During these two weeks, you must have a done product of highest value possible. So no matter how you look at it, you must produce something within those two weeks. It's a must. So, and that's more something you are producing is valuable something to the organization. So I mean that once you produce that thing, it's very valuable. It's either that particular thing will help them to generate money from their customers or will help them to save money. So that's how the team keep on bringing value. So if companies, if a company have like uh, um, five scrum teams working for them, it means that every two, two weeks, that team is bringing something to the table, something very tangible to the table. And that's how organization moves. So now let's um, look at the various agile scrum rules. Here is the product, um, the business um, owner. That is the ultimate stakeholder. And here is the end user and the subject matter as part. Then this box is the Scrum team. And this is the product owner interfacing with the customers, end users, and the big man, business owner, to understand what they want. They want the boys to do. And once they got the requirements, he got the requirements, 
It's not easy. It's not, uh, it's not an easy job, to be honest with you. Because to understand what these people need is not easy. Some of them might not tell you exactly what they want. But you must understand what they want and break it down for the for the boys to work on, which is the, the dev team. And the scrum master here is another big man acting like a saint, you know, trying to mentor everybody, try to make sure that everybody is doing what they are supposed to be doing try to make sure that there is a good planning and organization within the team. So this is the work of a scrum master. You are the main organizer here. So, and the product owner is always running around, talking to the stakeholders and coming back to tell you people, maybe there is changes, there is changes. This is what we want this to do. Developers will be here working on the, the on the solution, and the business analysts and the actor they are here with the developers, making sure that the developers are working on the solution. They are getting the solution. You keep refining. They, they are more interested. The, the business analysts here, they are more interested in making sure that. This requirement specification is being followed. And this man here, the product owner, is more interested in satisfying the stakeholders and customers through these people. And uh, this man here is interested in making sure that this uh, vision that the product owner brought is being realized by building the actual solution with the architect. This architect is equally a business analyst, the same thing. And then the QA, quality assurance, make sure that this thing they build, you test it to make sure that they conform to the acceptance, acceptable criteria or acceptance criteria or requirement specification. So this is how all these people work together. So the product owner should not only understand the customer, but also have a vision for the value the Scrum team is delivering to the customer. The product owner also balances the need of other stakeholders in, other, in the organization. The business is represented by the product owner who tells the development team what is uh, important to deliver. Trust between the these two rules very crucial. It is the responsibility of the product owner to ensure that they are delivering the most value to the organization. Then you have the Scrum Master. The Scrum Master is a servant leader, which not only describes a supportive style of uh, leadership, but also describes what they do on day to day basis. The Scrum Master is the role, the Scrum Master is the role as responsible for gluing everything together and ensuring that Scrum is being done well. In practical term, that means they help the product owner define value. The development team 
deliver the value and the scrum team to get to work better. The scrum master focuses on transparency, inspect and adapt. It's an important that the right people can see what is going on. Empiricism means the best way of planning is to work and learn from the work we are doing. So uh, one good thing about um, Scrum is that it gives everybody through empiricism, which one of their focal points is you learn on the work because you are work, most of the time we believe you are working on a complex pro, um, problem. So you, you, can't be, you can't say you have the, the, the authoritative knowledge of what you are developing. You keep on like the developers, they keep on trying different ways, different code till they get what they want, you know? So like in a project we are going to start on Monday, we want to achieve something, but from all the analysis it's very, very difficult to achieve that but still we are going to embark on that project. So what we are going to do is to use proof of concept on that particular project. So that proof of concept is to dive into that project as a test. We are test running the, the, the plan. So if after testing and the work, we start the real project, but after our testing, and it doesn't work, we abandon it. But we are not going to abandon the project without testing. So, and that is a uh, scrum for you. So, scrum is self organizing, dev team to step outside their comfort zone and try different things and use uh, practices. Values, Scrum defined five core values, which is courage. For you to come out and try something like what we are now trying to do uh, in our next sprint, which we are going to use proof of concept. It requires courage because from all our analysis is 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 not possible. So we are trying different uh, trying different approach to see how we are going to get that done. So and what we are doing is um, we want a situation where when the customers when when I am um, our sales team or the marketing team, after having a conversation with the customers on phone, all the voice data will be downloaded into the customer account. Not just in voice, but in text. So meaning that the cost of the, the 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 sales team they don't need to 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 jot down what they are talking the what they are their responses from the customers all they need is just engage customers and after engaging the customers everything you discuss with the customers will automatically downloaded into the customers account in the crm Customers relationship management we are using. And we can use the data to make analysis. So, which is very difficult. But we've um, developed the courage and we are very focused on getting that. And we're already committed to getting it. 
by agreeing to dive into it through proof of concept. So in Scrum, you must be respectful and you must be open. There is, we don't hide anything. Every document, everybody who have a, a, a central repository where everything is there. Like the, the, the work I'm doing as the, the product owner, in the project repository, Every update I make there is open for everybody to see it. You see me all the time. I will add, I will remove, I will add, I will remove, I will add, I will remove. So everything I'm doing is open. So everybody sees what I'm doing. You see what everybody is doing. There is a record. You can track what is everybody is doing. So it's very, very open. And that's how Scrum works. Then we have the development team, which is a call called the developers. Before it used to call them development team, but after the current review of the Scrum guide, they change it from development team to developers. So I encourage you guys to go and get a copy of Scrum Guide. So, and read it up. If you go to scrum.com, Scrum Guide is there, it's for free. You'll download it like, I don't think it's up to 20 pages. You can finish reading it in a, in a day. If you don't want to, to, to read the, the PDF copy, I think they have a voice copy, which you can equally get the voice copy and download the plug it in your ear. And before you know it, you finish reading it to get an authoritative knowledge about Scrum. I'll try as much as I can to digest everything for you. I'm telling you the source as well for some of us that are going to be uh, doing our Scrum certifications. The development team are the people that do the work. At first glance, you may think development team means the engineers or the design, <coughs> the programmers, but that's not always the case. According to the Scrum guide, the dev team can be comprised of all kinds of people, including designers, writers, and programmers. So these are the dev team. So this is the Scrum process. The Scrum process is that this is the stakeholder, the and this is the product owner. So it starts from here. The product owner gather requirements from the stakeholders, and then he tries as much as he can to break down those requirements into smaller, smaller units that the developers can understand and work on them, which we called product backlog. It's called product backlog. PBI is product backlog items. So break it down into product backlog item. A product backlog is a user story. So you already know what is user story. It's just that in Scrum, they like developing their own language. They are user stories. So, and then after breaking it down, it can be consumed in, in, a, in a sprint. And to do that, the team comes together and selects product backlog item from the top because the Scrum Master will prioritize them. 
that the most important items will be on top and the least important will be at the bottom. So the Scrum team will be picking product backlog item or the user stories from the top and they'll bring it to the screw to the sprint where they conduct a sprint planning meeting. And after the sprint planning meeting, all the sprints, all the product backlogs they selected, as soon as the sprint starts, those product backlog item that they planned with it during sprint plan becomes the sprint backlog. It's no longer the product backlog here because you are working in, inside sprint. So all the ones you selected inside sprint you are working is now the sprint backlog. And you will work on it for a period of two weeks, depending on the, the duration you select, but the duration cannot be more than one month. Some, some people even choose to work one month, one week, but it's not good because you put the developers under serious pressure. So two weeks is the ideal uh, duration so that the developers will not be lazy. So, and once you do that, once you start working, the developers will have daily scrum every day while working on that. And they will be having product backlog refinement. They keep on refining the backlog to make sure that everything is very understandable and clear. And they will be doing that for a period of two weeks and the the piece of uh, software you guys are working will be ready. Then you come here and invite the stakeholder under what we call sprint review. And then with the stakeholders, you review what you people have done, show the stakeholders what you people have done, and then the stakeholders are happy. Then you release. This is the release here, the increment. And then if you are using a software, maybe you are using a Samsung software, very soon after this release, Samsung will tell you there is an update. You need to update your Samsung software because the Sprint, the, the Scrum team have released something. So you go and make updates. Or if you are using any application from Play Store, they will tell you that uh, so, so, so application needs to be updated because they've added something to that particular software. And after then, there's one other thing you call sprint retrospective, where the team comes together before they start another sprint to plan. Because while working, there must be mistakes. They correct their mistake and put their house in order if there is any team members that are having misunderstanding, this is time to address the issue to make sure that such a thing doesn't happen again. Anything you feel that needs to be addressed, this is time to address it. And the team go back to product backlog to select more item for the next sprint. So, and this is a, a Scrum cheat sheet. It comprises everything you need to know about Scrum. So here is the four agile value. And the four agile value here is individual and interaction over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. Then we come here, we have 12 principles of uh, Scrum, and that is Customer satisfaction, that is the highest priority. Through early and continuous 
delivery of value, valuable solution. Welcome change, changing requirements. Even late in development, agile process harness change for a customer's competitive advantage. So you cannot say it's only in a waterfall that you see the, the project manager will be arguing with the, pro, with the stakeholders over a change. In Scrum, change is part of the ongoing process. Deliver working software regularly from a couple of weeks to a couple of uh, months, which with a, prefer, a preference to the shorter time scale. So you must bring something to the table to deliver working solution regularly. Business people and developers must work together daily through throughout the project, through daily standoff. Build projects around motivational individual. Give the give them the environment and support they need. And that is uh, trust them. You need to give them the trust. Show them you trust them. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face to face. So you, you, you work together as a team, collaborate as a team. That is a constant collaboration as well. Working solution, that is a working software. Agile process promote sustainable development. The sponsor and developer and the user should be able to maintain a constant pace of a constant pace indefinitely. So it's constant, yeah, it's sustainable development. Those two two weeks, you will be doing two two weeks, you'll be producing something gradually. That is a sustainable, is sustainable development. You don't rush everything, just keep doing it gradually, gradually. According to Scrooms, Land Steady wins the race. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work done. So you have to be everything, mostly is everything is simple. That's why user story, you don't try user story in, in not a, any user story that is more than five lines is, is becoming big. So you, you are thinking of breaking it into user stories, making things very simple for everybody. In Agile, they like things very simple. They don't like uh, ambiguous grammars or statements. Everything must be simple. 11, the best architect, architecture requirement and design emerge from self-organizing. Self-organizing when two people work together as a team, brainstorm on ideas. Number 12, a regular interval. At regular interval, the team reflects on how to become more effective then tune and adjust. That means at the end of every sprint, you come together under sprint retrospective to plan and look at your in-house and adjust, correct all your mistakes. And here we have Scrum role, we have Scrum, Scrum team, we have product owner, we have developers, we have Scrum master, which we have spoken about. Then here we have five Scrum events. 
Number one here is print, which is uh, every, depending on the length of time you choose, but you, most, of, <coughs> most of the time, two weeks. And it can be even more than two weeks. Um, we are, what we are doing now, we use two weeks, but it can't exceed one month. So that is a sprint for you. As soon as the sprint end, the next sprint begins. So they don't give workers breathing space. The sprint is a container for all the scrum events. So every scrum event revolves around this, the sprint, which is still sprint, sprint planning. Sprint planning is when you people plan together to start work, pick uh, product backlog, refine it, groom it, and uh, move it to um, sprint and start the sprint. So that's what we call sprint planning. You understand why the sprint is valuable, what prioritize item the team will be working on and how the team will complete the work. Then daily scrum. Every day you come together as a team to inspect yourself and adapt. Inspect and adapt, and that, that means you look at what you will be doing, what you are planning to do, and your challenges. If you have challenges, the team will come together to help you to resolve your challenges. Sprint review, when the team finish doing their work, we invite the stakeholder that send you work to show the work you've done to them and they get their feedback, whether they are happy or not. It will help you to plan the next sprint. Retrospective, after you have finished your sprint, you come together to look at what you people have been doing, the ones you people got right, you praise yourself, the ones you people didn't get right, then you people take correction and then go back to um, the sprint. If you have a problem, <clears throat> you come together, no blaming, you, you resolve your problem, no one blames everybody. Every problem belongs to everybody. If you have a problem, use root cause, uh, root cause analysis to find out the root of the problem and solve it. And that is it um, for Scrum. If you can master all these things, then you're already a Scrum master. So this is... Um, software development life cycle project framework. If we want to embark on software development, these are the, the things you will be looking at, uh, whether you are working in Scrum environment or you are working with um, waterfall, you must look at all these things. Software development life cycle is the application of standard business practice to building software application. It's typically divided into each step. You must plan, you must gather requirements, analyze your requirements, you must design, you must implement. And then after then you must document your, your work and test and deploy and then maintain. So even in sprint, all these things, all these things we are saying is we are passing through all this. Even in waterfall, all these we are listed here, we are passing all through this. So here we have be a task in a project plan. In a project plan, this is a project 
management framework with all the tasks and deliverables. So as a BA, you look at where BA here, that is what is BA. So like under here, you can see PM. This is the one that is consigns PM. So under this project, I'm going to, when you start working, all these templates is going to be deployed within the project repository. Um, so we have a, a team project template. We have a project template folder in the project repository where all these documents you are seeing here, all of them are going to be there as a resources for you to use. So you don't need to worry because you are going to have everything. So even this particular template, this is one of the things I'm going to want you people to study once you start, you know what you are going to be doing. So the B is here, B A, you need to understand the, the project scope. So identify the project scope, that is the work, scope of work. You need to understand the, the scope of work we are doing. That's why you see B A is here. Identify stakeholders and expectation. As a B A, you need to do that. You create projects strategy documents here you need to do that and then from here preliminary project plan and uh, this is um create project strategy document is not be is project manager and uh, pmo but facilitate initial requirement gathering this is the work of BA, document existing process, BA, requirement analysis, gap analysis, and other analysis, uh, BA, document future process, that is to be BA, validate high level requirement, BA, estimate high level requirement, BA, create business case, BA. Then you come to define stage, the next stage after the initiate stage of when you have initiated the project. Then create feature map, BA. Create wireframe, BA. Create use case diagram, BA. Create epic list, BA. User stories and acceptance criteria, BA. Create test cases and test plan, BA. Document benefits review plan, BA. Then you come to execute stage. Groom user stories and acceptance criteria, BA. Validate and sign off user stories, BA. Enter user stories in JIRA, BA. Then here yeah, under development tasks, you have create definition of ready checklist, BA Scrum Master, product backlog grooming, BA Scrum Master, estimate user stories, BA Scrum Master, sprint planning and execution, BA Scrum Master, demo at the end of the C B A, then testing, execute test plan and test case, tester B A, cross browser, so platform testing, tester and B A, set up staging environment for testing B A and tester, facilitate U A T B A. So you see B A's job is. That's why companies are looking for BAs everywhere. Look think client acceptance for BA. Then close all the grid PMO. Lesson learn report, project manager PMO, post implementation review, 
project manager BA and PMO, then update business case BA, upload project reports to repository PMO, and then end project closure report project manager. So you know your role as the BA as the project manager. Then we have some tools we use as PAs. We have inversion, we have Figma, all these things are designed just like uh, GC or draw.io. We have Jira, Jira is for, for um, managing project within Agile, um, environment. Confluence is for collaboration. Visio is just like uh, you know about Visio, um, like Lucy Charts or Draw.io. We have um, Lucy Charts, we already know, we have no Hangouts. Miro is just like the um, uh, Lucy Charts as well. Azure DevOps is just like Jira. They're almost the same thing. You know, the, well, that's what I'm using now is Azure DevOps. So, and blast me, all, all these things are, uh, but the main important thing I want you to know, because that's the, the one you'll be using most, is um, Lucid Chart, Draw.io, and Visu. Then, Jira or DevOps or Jira. But if you can learn DevOps, the best thing is to learn Jira because Jira is more popular. But DevOps is coming up, but they are the same thing. Just like uh, this um, two uh, Lucid Chat and the Microsoft Visio, and they are the same thing. So these are the ones I've selected for us to treat here, which is. Um, Microsoft 365. We already know about this uh, application. It's all is a is a collection of all the Microsoft application which you use. So we have Microsoft Team for for collaboration. It's just like Basecamp. We have um, Excel. We have PowerPoint. We have Skype. We have. Um, um Microsoft um Microsoft uh, oh look uh this will just run out of my mind it's is a Microsoft uh drive a uh, one note is there is um and this is Microsoft um Outlook just like um just like uh, uh google G, just like gmail we know power we, we know this is one note just a notepad this is um um microsoft word which all of us use on daily basis so Microsoft 365 combined the latest business applications such as Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, with Windows 10 and best in class security. So this um, all we have here for Microsoft. Uh, uh, 365. It's good if you can know about the only problem is that all these things, Microsoft, they don't make their products through most of their product is very difficult to get them free. Everything is money for them. So this is base camp. And uh, I think I've showed you people base camp before. 
Basecamp is an online collaboration app that lets people manage their work together and communicate with one another. You can use it to keep track of all the tasks, deadline, file, discussion, and announcement that happens around the work. It's very good. I've been using it for a lot of my projects, and that's you people might likely going to be using it during your work placement. So when you'll be using it, you'll have more, but it's very easy. We'll have more workshop on that to teach you people how to use it better. You can also some of this application, you can, you can make your own personal research to understand it. Jira, Jira is software. Jira software is designed to help team of all type manage work. Originally, Jira was designed as a bug and issue tracker. An agile scrum work management solution that powers collaboration. So mostly in agile environment, this is what either this Jira or Azure DevOps is what they are using, but Jira is more popular. Dev, Azure DevOps, I think they copied the Azure DevOps is a clone of this Jira. It's just because uh, uh, Azure DevOps is owned by Microsoft and they are richer. So it seems like it's a uh, becoming popular, but the original work. The original design comes from this Jira, and Jira is still very powerful up to today. So, in Jira, here you see that you plan through roadmap, you create your backlog, and you, you create your under your, after your backlog, you move to, to sprint, you plan your sprint, you start managing here through the Scrum through this Kanban board that is inbuilt in Jira. Very soon you saw these things. You start using it for work related or project related uh, processes. Then we have uh, draw.io. All of you know draw.io already because some of you have already started using it to do their homework, the assignment. The unified modeling language is a general purpose development modeling language in the field of software engineering that is intended to provide standard way of visualizing design in a system. Some of the UML softwares are Draw.io, Visio, LucidChart, Miro, and ET. So all these things are called, uh, they all Draw.io software. I mean, a UML software, Unified Modeling Language. Modeling is very serious business in business analysis. And for you to do this modeling, this is the, 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 the softwares you are going to use for that. So all this modeling with a, is a language, just like we have programming language. They have their own language. This is modeling language. And as a developers dwell in um, programming languages, but business analysts, dwell in modeling languages. So I want you to understand it that way. So all these modern languages, this is VCO, just like Draw.io. This is Lucid Charts, just like VCO and Draw.io. And this is Miro. They're all the same thing or with different name and from different companies. So whichever one you like, you can go and use them. 
So, <coughs> so thank you for your patience till we end this particular module. So if you have any question, you can bring it up. Any question? Okay. It's not, uh, I know it's not easy, Johnny, but thank you all who uh, devotedly, patiently followed the class to this point. Yeah, we still have more to do in the, in the work placement. The next thing is that all these things you'll be learning, it's time to go and do it practical. So it's now my own time to, to look at your people, just like you people have been looking at me. You know, so I will talk small and I will give you, you go and do your work and report back. So, but I believe you guys can do it. So, we'll look at our assignment over the weekend and uh, some of the ones I've not given, I've not learned, I will give all the assignments that I mean to give. Even if it means you submitting your assignment while doing your work, you need to do it. So, for those that will be uh, struggling with uh, our portal, to be honest with you, our portal don't have any problem. It's the Nigerian ecosystem, which I witnessed myself when I visited Nigeria last. But by grace of God, we'll continue to progress and we'll come to a stage where our ecosystem will become very clean and we won't struggle with network issues. So, good night, everyone, and uh, everyone need to go have um, a rest and uh, we'll see you again very soon.